275 offer cars in here, plus I think 20 some box cars and 20 some flat cars. Uh, you know what, let me, one second here, let me get that rattle. This is the early version of a safety switch right here. <laughs> right. But uh, so basically, what you see in here, the like the wood floor you're standing on, we just replaced this this winter. Um, the original wood had rotted away almost to nothing, but what you're seeing is all new lumber that actually came out of trees that we cut on the property up in Robertsdale. So it's all going back to where it belongs. The two foot gauge cart you see was a material handling cart. It went probably another 100 yards outside of the building along the lumber shed. That way they could bring in large timbers that they would build to frames and things for their early hopper cars. Um, 1915, they started building the, the steel car fleet. So all of those cars were constructed in here. They brought in like the trucks and the couplers and any of the commercial components, but all the sheet work, angle work was all done in here. You see a bunch of rivet forges along the center bay over there. They never really did any torching in here of any degree or welding. Um, most of the repair work, would have, the heavy work would have been cut up outside and then they brought it in here to do the finish work and then rivet it all in here. So if you've ever been around riveting and you can imagine two or three guns going in here at one point in time, it was not quiet. That's probably why the door, like they had the sign on the back of the door says keep it closed because none of the machinists wanted any of those car guys. Yeah, coming over into the machine shop, that was a whole other thing. But if you look um, at the very end, you'll see a, a cross cut, cut off saw, big with a big saw blade on it. There's a wood planer there. Those chips are actually fresh. We just got that planer fixed up and running again here in the last month or so. The machine it's right here is a more. Uh, it's actually called a car mortising and boring machine. And basically, it, uh, mortises are basically just a square hole that you would put a tenon in and that's how the cars you know were constructed at the time this these are this is actually a very rare machine now it wasn't all that common even back in the day but you see you, you pull down drill a round hole with a regular drill bit and then that chisel would square the hole that way you could put the tenon joint in it um, we're almost ready to have this thing operational it is our goal at some point to potentially rebuild an early EBT wooden hopper car in here actually on this equipment um, someday, if you give me enough time, and we'll do it. Um, the wheel set. So you saw where the wheel press was coming in the door. And there's a, you know, so you wonder if they had to repair a car over here, how in the world did they get the wheels over to the wheel press? Because you can't just easily pick them up, and they're heavy and they roll around. So basically, they devised a plan that they could do all their wheel work on this center track, roll, jack the car up, get the wheel set out from under, roll the wheels out to that little cart that you saw on the way in. Then they could slide that cart over to the other door, roll them right up into the wheel press, do the work, and then reverse the process. They found all kinds of neat ways to do things. If you look above, you'll see a bunch of rail, like the one right above my head here. They have trolleys with, top, with chain poles on them. They could move things around. At the very end of the building, you'll see a bunch of sheets still leaning up against the center posts over there. Those are basically the last side sheets that they were using to repair cars in the 50s when the railroad closed. There's enough side sheets there to do, I think, seven more hoppers if we really wanted to. They're all three punched and ready to go. Um, there's chain falls and, and, and overhead trolleys down there that allowed them to lift in one of those entire sheets up and set it into place, fold it up quick, and that's when they started ripping it. Um, we've got a molding machine over here that that's just Brad just talking, right? mold like they it's were doing yeah. after cars and stations things and then bandsaw here behind us so what I'll do is I'll give you a chance to kind of walk around feel free all of our track speeders all of the known track speeders narrow gauge uh, MW cars that still exist all but one are here on the property and I think five or six of them are down here right now feel free to walk down the center here what we'll do is if you want to kind of mosey your way over to the center track on the on the dirt floor I'll demonstrate some of the pulleys over here as well. I just ask that you're not underneath them when we turn them off. And you'll see right here is a good example of a crossed belt. And you'll see that the shaft that runs the planer is actually running it the opposite direction of the rest of the system. So if I could have you kind of just work your way over. Just watch your steps.
This is the East Broad Top three foot and hour gauge Rock Hill Furnace, Pennsylvania. Thursday, May 9th, 2024, we're in the car shop. And that was East Broad Top General Manager, Brad Esposito narrating. Brad Esposito, General Manager. Of Here's another case where you've got this big six foot diameter wooden pulley. And it's wood because if you can imagine that being cast iron, there's a ton of cast iron there. But this then goes to a much smaller pulley above the, on the uh, planer, which then allows it to run at a way higher RPM. So we got the planer running. Now I said we're running the machine at about third speed. The planer is designed to run at about 60 feet per minute. We had it running at about 15 feet per minute. It did plane the board, but it sounded like a woodpecker on steroids. You could hear the thing hitting every time, but we just had to make some sawdust so it works. You'll see behind there where the cutoff saw is, the, the pulley's above it. That machine sits at a 90 degree angle from the way the belting runs. And so in order to make that work, they use what was called a mule drive. So all that belts and pulley system above it is designed to turn that 90 degrees. Um, I'm hoping to get that back up and running here sometime in the near future, but it's uh, pretty pretty neat to see how they bend everything. You know, everything just bends around to make it work. Yes. Any of the guards were here probably after World War II. Yeah, feel free to go down. You can see the sheets on the very end there by Coach E. Coach, is that actively being worked on or just yeah, work? Yes. We started some work on it, realized it needed part of our work than we basically did I mean, you got to figure that coach was built in 1885, came here in 1915, second hand. And that's a brought top caboose. Their lifespan on modern cars is a long time. So that thing is 130 years old. So it's and the coach is 130 old. years old that we're looking at. 130 years old. Here's a coach built 130 years ago. And these are the, I believe, the sheets where they could build and use them to build another seven hopper cars, steel sheets. Some uh, maintenance away equipment. Again, uh, <clears throat> we're at the East Broad Top Railroad, three foot narrow gauge Rock Hill Furnace, Pennsylvania. The car shop, Thursday, May 9th, 2024, over and out.